It's time again to hear from the Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. This weekly sermon podcast comes to you from Sharonville and the hills surrounding Cincinnati, Ohio. And here now is Pastor Dave. You can take your Bible and turn with me to John chapter 10 today. John chapter 10. Now we've been doing a series of messages about knowing and not knowing in John. And we come now to chapter 10, and I've entitled this message, Knowing the Shepherd. We're just going to read the first 10 verses today. And look at the idea of knowing here in chapter 10 in these 10 verses, but there's really so much more. Knowing is just one small piece of what the Lord has to say to us here in these first 10 verses. So John chapter 10, beginning at verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then Jesus said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I... Am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. So the previous messages, we've, we've looked at knowing all throughout the Gospel of John and has seen some very, it has been so diverse. The, the characters that we've met and the places that we've been, the pool of Siloam, the pool of Bethesda, we've been in the temple compound, we've been at a wedding feast, we've been at the well of Samaria, and we've been all over the place with following this little thread of knowing and not knowing in the gospel. And we come now today to John chapter 10. We find something in John that we really don't find that often in John, not like we find it in the synoptic gospels, and that is a parable. Jesus is teaching in a parable here in John. And so let me just kind of set up the passage for you. In the first six verses, we have the parable. We have the disciples' confusion about the parable in seven, or in, I'm sorry, the first five verses of the parable. In six, the disciples are confused. They don't understand the parable. And then seven through ten, we have the explanation. So we have the parable and Jesus' explanation of the parable, much like what we have with the parable of the wheat and tares. Remember that one? In the Gospel of Matthew, he tells the parable of the wheat and the tares. And the disciples, after he gets done with the parable and other things, he The disciples pull him aside and they say, could you sort of explain that a little bit to us? And so he has to give them the interpretation of the parable, which is beautiful that we get that inside information. And we have it here, here in John chapter 10, the same way. This is about sheep, right? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not in by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. This idea of... The sheepfold is not a new idea for the Jewish hearers that are listening to Jesus here in John's Gospel. If you go back in your Bible to the book of Psalms, let me just, and you can go there with me if you'd like, or you can wait till I get there and I'll read it for you. But if you have your Bible, just might want to turn back to Psalm 78. Psalm 78, by the way, is a great psalm, a psalm of remembering And it really challenges us to remember. So the end of Psalm 78, in verse 68, He chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion which he loved. 
He built his sanctuary like high places, like high palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds, from following the ewes, great with young. He brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his hands. You see the imagery of the shepherd here and the sheep. Okay, that's Psalm 78. Psalm 79, look at the end of Psalm 79, verse 13. So we thy people and sheep of thy pasture will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. That's the end of Psalm 79. So again, we have the imagery of Israel being a sheep, a group of sheep, a sheepfold uh, in a pasture and the Lord is the shepherd. Well, Psalm 80, verse 1, which is the very next psalm in, in the book of Psalms, begins like this. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel. Thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, thou that dwellest between the cherubims, shine forth. Boy, that's a beautiful psalm too. I hope you're following Daily Dose Radio. When I was studying for this sermon, I thought, where have I read about sheepfolds and the Lord being the shepherd? And, of course, right here in the Psalms, everything really is right here in the Psalms. So that's my plug for Daily Dose Radio today. And, by the way, I don't know if I told you this, a couple of weeks back, Daily Dose Radio published its 500th episode. Yeah, I don't know if I told you that or not. And we're coming up on two years now of broadcasting Daily Dose Radio, and we've had, like I said, over 500 now episodes published, and we've had over 20,000 plays of both Daily Dose Radio and Creek Road Baptist Pulpit. Very, very excited that the Lord has, has blessed that ministry. Okay, come back to John chapter 10 with me. 78, 79, and 80 in the book of the Psalter, we have this imagery of the sheepfold. So when Jesus begins talking here about sheep and sheepfolds, the disciples, they understand that, and they understand not only that it's a spiritual reference to the Lord, God, shepherding Israel, but they also stand the agricultural reference because they know what sheep are and they know about sheepfolds because they can probably look out their door and on the hillsides of Galilee and Judea, they can see shepherds leading flocks of sheep. And they see them leading them into the sheepfold in the evening and out of the sheepfold in the morning. A sheepfold was an area, not as big as the stage, maybe half as big as the stage, square, and it was, it was fenced with stones. Have you ever been through central Kentucky and seen some of the, um, the old stone fences uh, that were built back in the middle, middle of the 19th century by slave labor, and they were stacked stones, usually creek stones, stacked flat and pieced together so tightly and then at the top, they would stand the stones up on the top and make a, a decorative row on the top of that fence. And they were, the fences were like this wide. And then the row on the top, the stones stood straight up, kind of like uh, little daggers, you know, to, so that they would not be comfortable for anything to put its feet or paws up on top of that. It was a nice little fence that was a boundary, but it was also functional because it kept cattle and things in. Well, that's just like a sheepfold in Israel. They made a stone fence about that hall, and they built it in a square, sometimes in a circle, and it would have a very narrow opening so that one, maybe one and a half sheep could get through that opening. And in the evening time, the shepherd would crowd all those sheep into that sheepfold, and that's where they would sleep for the night. Sometimes, if this was out in the countryside... If you, and they would build these just in various places. If you owned property, you would have one on your property. But if you just uh, grazed your livestock out on the, in the wilderness, sometimes shepherds would build them in the wilderness, and any shepherd could use them. So it was just kind of a community thing, and it was meant to protect the sheep at night from the wild animals. So the sheep would go into the sheepfold, and the shepherd... After the sh he got the sheep settled down and in their place, he would lay across the opening. He would lay with his back to the opening, his cloak over top of him, and his staff in his hand because he knew if he had to get up in the middle of the night, it was going to be to drive off something. 
So anything that was going to get into that sheepfold had to come through him. He was the door to the sheepfold. That's the imagery here of the door. We're going to talk about that just a little bit more in a moment. But notice what Jesus says, the very first thing in his parable. Verily, verily. Now we know that, right? It's truth. This is a truth statement. He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, and they would have to come over those walls, those fenced stone walls around that sheepfold, the same as a thief and a robber. Well, of course it is. Why wouldn't you go through the door? Well, because you would have to go through the doorkeeper, the shepherd. A thief and a robber comes up in the back, the furthest point away from the shepherd, grabs the sheep and runs. Notice verse 2. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So the shepherd is the door. He's also the one that comes and goes from the door because he's the one that leads them in, and he's the one that leads them out. Okay, so who enters the sheepfold? First of all, we have a problem. Right away, right off the bat. Very first thing in this parable, we have a problem. A thief and a robber is mentioned. So we know that there's someone who wants to come into the sheepfold after something. He's after the sheep, and it's not somebody that has good intentions. Also somebody who enters into the sheepfold who does have good intentions, and that is the shepherd of the sheep. Now the disciples are hearing this, and they're probably thinking to themselves, is he talking about a real shepherd in the wilderness in a sheepfold, or is he talking about the God of Israel shepherding Jacob like sheep? So all these things are running through their minds, but then this idea of a thief totally breaks the imagery, this beautiful pastoral imagery. There's danger out there that somebody would try to steal the sheep. So there, you know, there's all this going on. Verse 2 says, He that entereth by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. And the disciples are thinking to themselves, Well, yeah, okay, we get that. We, we know how that works. So who do the sheep recognize? Well, look at verse 3. To him the porter openeth. The sheep hear his voice, he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Now, notice that word there, porter. Some sheepfolds were, if you weren't out in the wilderness, you had a sheepfold back at home, if you were a shepherd. And probably that sheepfold was attached to the side of your home. And it was just the same thing, except it was more elaborate, probably a little bit larger, and the walls were taller. And you probably had a servant whose job it was to keep the sheep in that sheepfold until the shepherd got up in the morning, got dressed, had his breakfast, and was ready to take the sheep out for pasture. So there was somebody who did the job of the doorway. Now, the shepherd would do that in the wilderness, but if home, he might have had a servant to do that. So when the shepherd comes out to get the sheep, who does the porter open to? He's not going to open it up to a stranger because a stranger doesn't own the sheep. A stranger didn't build the the sheepfold. A stranger doesn't pay the porter. A stranger has no business, just like Nehemiah said to Sanballat and Tobiah. You have no right, memorial, or portion in Jerusalem. Same the porter would say to any stranger that showed up to the shepherd's sheepfold. He would say, you don't belong here. You better move along. So who does the porter open to? He opens to the shepherd. Why? Because the sheep hear the shepherd. Not only do they hear him coming and they know his gait and they know what he sounds like, but then he says, hey guys, and they know his voice. Now we're not going to read down into chapter 10 where Jesus talks about the shepherd calling his sheep by name, but I think it's just marvelous. The the history of shepherding, some commentators have said that the shepherd would give his sheep Nicknames, and he would call them by their nicknames, like Fluffy, or Scruffy, or Long Ears, or White Nose, or Wiggly Tail. You know, I mean, you could just imagine the the names you could come up with. A Spot, you know, I mean, just the funny names you could come up with for sheep. And he knows he knows every one of them. He's got a nickname for all of them, and he starts calling them by name, and they know because this is the man who's protected them. This is the man who's fed them. This is the man who's helped them give birth. This is the man who's cared for them when they were sick. This is the one that leads them out into pasture and feeds them. This is the one that brings them back home and protects them. This is 